All right, guys, if you remember in December, I set up this big tank, and underneath, it's got a really nice seamless sump from Custom Aquariums. Uh, I have not talked about it much since I set it up, and I had another piece to add. We're gonna do that today. Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech, and as you remember, back in December, we set up the seamless sump, we set up the sock tub, and the baffle tub, and I have this extra sort of, I guess you could call it a refugium. It actually has a couple of different functions, to, depending on how you set it up. Now before I get any further, I have to say that if I had to do this again, I would have set it all up at the same time. Uh, my thought was that there would be kind of too much to talk about. Uh, initially if I did it all together and I could always set up that last part later as it turns out it was kind of a pain to set it up once everything else was already in place and I really like if I had to do this again I really would have done it all at the same time so I'm just gonna get that out of the way right now so far my experience with the seamless sump has been very positive uh, it's a really easy filter to maintain uh, of course, it's great. It's really huge. It's got a large volume of water. Really adds to the volume of water. This is a 210, but then there's, especially with the new piece added, it's almost like 60 gallons or so of extra water for the tank. So it really brings the water volume up, or at least it counteracts all the terrain and uh, all the stuff that I put in there that would probably be taken away from the gallons that are in there. I'm really happy with the sump. I guess, you know, the one thing to note that's really different about the sump than other things, aside from like almost everything else, is that uh, it's pretty loud. I'd say overall, this is, a, this is a really pretty noisy aquarium, but it's downstairs where there's a lot more things going on. Uh, it doesn't inhibit me watching TV or whatever. It's not so loud that it's really annoying, but it is noticeable, especially when the house is quiet and stuff, uh, you do hear this kind of trickling water effect. It's a little bit like having a trickling pond right there in your living room. For some people that's good, for some people that's bad, but if you're thinking about installing maybe a sump someplace where you want it to be quiet, like, I don't know, a library or uh, maybe your bedroom and that sort of thing, I get all kinds of questions about how quiet something is for a bedroom aquarium. This is probably not an adequate solution for that sort of thing. Now I've thought about doing some videos of maybe buying some sound dampening stuff and trying to work with that. But I found that in my videos, it doesn't come across quite so bad. It's not something that is so loud that it really messes with the sound where I can't videotape in here. Not like the coffee maker does. And now that we're used to it, I mean, honestly, we don't even hear it anymore. So uh, it doesn't really bother us a whole lot. I still might experiment with that a little bit but for the most part, it just hasn't been a problem. Now the reservoir tub gives you a couple of different options. And what's really nice about the seamless sumps is that they have little divots. So it's kind of like, it shows you exactly where you need to drill some holes to do different things. Now the way this extra tub works is basically you drill a hole in the baffle tub and at the same level or similar level, you drill a hole in the extra tub, the reservoir, and you can do it low and use that reservoir to mitigate evaporation in the bigger tub. It'll basically evaporate from there first. It pulls from that water. Or you can do it higher, which is what we did today, and use it sort of like a refugium, or just kind of an extra amount of water. Now my plans for it have been, I've had a couple of different things. I thought about actually planting it, and it's got a nice glass top. I could throw a light on there and use it to kind of incubate plants. Now it wouldn't be effective as a quarantine because this is part of the you know, the rest of the filtration runs through there, but you could use it to separate a fish that maybe was having some problems. If I remember correctly, you get about, it's about a 16 gallon or so uh, amount of space, which is good for a lot of different things. As far as what my plans for it are in the short term, uh, now, as I break down aquariums, see, normally I couldn't put any small fish in here, they'd just get eaten. But with this extra tub down here separated, I'll be able to take, like as I break down aquariums, I can take all the small fish and things that are in there, put them in here to hold them while their other tank is being prepared or while I move tanks around. It's always a challenge for me if I wanna break a tank down or something like that, 
I have to put those fish somewhere. They can't just, you know, I can't just throw them into another tank. And it's kind of nice to throw them into something without a lot of decorations because eventually I'm going to want to catch them out of there. And uh, that could be problematic. So this big reservoir tub is going to be kind of a nice holding area. So as I break down a tank or I move a tank around, uh, so long as they, the parameters are the same, like how much heat they can take and, and, and that sort of thing, uh, they, will, they will be able to stay in here. So let's go ahead and cut to the installation and I'll kind of show you how that comes together. Now, some of you may remember, I wanted to set up CO2 in this tank and I just kind of never got around to it, but the mechanism that's gonna feed water into the reservoir tub also works the CO2. See, I've got this uh, reactor, that gray thing you see there, is a reactor, the pump's gonna pump water in. It's gonna go both into the reactor and out this tube, which will feed over to the other tank or the other tub. Now on the other side of that reactor, I'm gonna have this sponge. And uh, this sponge is just gonna help kind of absorb any extra CO2 bubbles that come out and just kind of keep it from going directly out of the tank, you know, just in case, I don't know how much is gonna bubble through, but that's gonna be kind of like a secondary reactor just to sort of, uh, just to keep those bubbles in place. And what I did basically is I just wedged that in there and it, it actually worked out pretty good. That's a, that's a sponge I got from Swiss Tropicals that I, I bought as a pre-filter, but I've been using it for a couple of different things. And I'm just gonna throw that tiny pump just kind of underneath it a little bit, just to keep it uh, submerged. Now I've pretty much got all of this stuff squared away. Uh, I've got these convenient holes in the top to run everything through. And now it's time to start drilling on the other tank. Now, of course, like I mentioned before, I'm drilling my holes up a little higher up towards the top. And uh, this is the part that really would have, another part, of course, that really would have been a benefit to, to do before uh, I had water and stuff in there because uh, all those little plastic shavings are kind of a pain. And what we're looking at here is a bulkhead. Now well, these bulkheads, basically I, I cut like a one inch hole and then they just screw in. You'll notice there's a nut on the back and what I found worked really good is to get that uh, first part in as far as I could and then tighten that nut down until it all uh, really clasped together. It was a little hard to hold that with a hand. The other thing I got is this drain and uh, this is a drain, it comes from Custom Aquariums and it fits right into the end of that bulkhead and it provides a whole bunch of different sources for the water to run through. So you have less of a chance of anything uh, clogging that up and making that overflow. So it's kind of a little safety thing just to make sure it overflows the way it should. And like I said, it just plugs right in to that bulkhead and has a nice snug fit right there. Now this is the hose that connects the two tubs and it's got a couple of these little things that, that will just slide right into the bulkhead. And uh, it, it attaches just like you're, you attach most hoses, you know, you work it onto the, to the nub there and then you tighten it down with the little clamp. Now I'm gonna have to drain the baffle tub and I, what I did is I just went ahead and turned on the pump that I had set in there and uh, drained some of the water out. And of course, drilled another hole and installed the other bulkhead, just like I did before. Then I took the tube and I kind of made a rough measurement and sliced it. And once I got the other side on, I just went ahead and inserted both the tubes and just made sure they were fit nice and tight. I drilled another hole there just to make a nice transition between the two tubs and uh, make that a nice clean thing on top. And then as I started filling up the tub, I noticed uh, some plastic from where I drilled and I've just been kind of fishing that out with a net. Uh, really wish I'd done this beforehand so I could have avoided any of that, but it hasn't been too bad just kind of getting it all out of there. Okay, one of my last steps that I got to with the CO2 is I got this regulator. It's an up aqua regulator. I've used it before and it is in my little Amazon list too, if you're interested. Uh, it doesn't have a bubble counter or anything. I was going to add that in a different way, but uh, I kind of got it ready to set up and I went to go attach it to the large CO2 canister. But what I found is uh, some of the threads on the CO2 canister are stripped. And so uh, I could not get it to fit 
the way it should on there. I'm gonna have to take the CO2 can probably back to the guys that fill it up and, and just see what's up with that. See if I can get a new one and then just try it again. So I'll have to just try that part again later. Yeah, so once again, like if you didn't see the video before about the seamless sump and kind of how it works, it, it's a really, really cool thing. Uh, it's made out of this special plastic that doesn't let things adhere to it. So you're never gonna get algae and stuff like that growing into it to the point where you can't get it off. It's a really hard plastic that won't mess up. Like your heater probably won't melt through it. Uh, it's got, it's shock resistant. It's the kind of thing you can't like accidentally like punch a hole in it. It's got really nice glass top so you can really see what's going on in there. Of course, it's got the divot. So if you wanna add on or customize it in any way, You've got lots and lots of options. You can take these things and make them just as long as you want. Like if you do a thousand, two thousand gallon aquarium, you can just keep adding parts to this and just make this a huge, huge filter. It's already a really large filter. It's actually even more filter than we really need, uh, even for this tank. Hey, Mr. Tubes. Hey, buddy. But I've really enjoyed how simple it is to clean, how Oh, it's easy, especially, you know, with these big moths, how easy it is to get in there and maneuver and uh, get things around. Uh, even underneath here in this kind of tight space, it's been, it's been a real pleasure to work with this thing. Okay, but that's all I got for you this week, folks. Until next time, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Alright, so it's been a few <coughs> Okay folks, so it's been a few weeks since I set up the This is probably not This this solution will probably gives you a couple of different options. Uh, what's nice about the custom aquariums uh, What's nice about the seamless sun If you do it low it Now what you do with this extra tub uh,